In the year 2023, in the middle of September, heading into the 23-24 season, this is the last name that I thought we would actually be making a video about. But today we are talking about one of the ghosts of the Edmonton Oilers, a guy whose reputation and status kind of haunts the team as one of the bigger failures of the past few decades. Let's take our sights back to the 2012 NHL entry draft and go over one of the many Edmonton first overall picks. No, we're not talking about the Nuge, we're not talking about Hall or Connor McDavid. Today we are talking about one of the biggest busts in the NHL's recent memory, Nail Yakupov. And we've made a few videos just kind of alluding to Yakupov's existence over the years. There was another video we made where we said that another prospect would be the next Yakupov, which is kind of a slap in the face because Yakupov didn't really amount to anything substantial in the National Hockey League, despite being a first overall pick and a guy that a lot of people wanted to succeed. But either way, today we're heading over onto a recent segment by Yakupov made on the Dropping Gloves podcast. This is a show which is hosted by, who are the hosts over here? John Scott, so there you go, big names on this show. And you also have Tim Wurtzberger doing his part as well. They had themselves Neil Yakupov. Edmonton Oilers' first overall pick on the show, and he had himself a few comments made about the Oilers and his entire progression, let's just say, as an NHL athlete. Now, before we dive into that and go into what exactly it is Yakupov says, let's go over the profile here once more. He's 29 years old, so there you go. He is already in the tail end of his NHL, not NHL, hockey playing career, you could say. 5'11", 196, left-handed guy, plays on both wings, and as we had said, first overall pick in 2012. Yakupov was taken first because of a very good campaign he had in the OHL, 69 points, so very nice amount of points in 42 games played. He eventually made the Oilers right away afterwards, after spending some more time in the KHL because of the lockout. He had 31 points in 48 games played, which admittedly is not a bad point per game number in the slightest. He was never really able to grow past that though, and eventually found himself on the St. Louis Blues. He wasn't great over there either, and then found himself on the Colorado Avalanche, where, once again, he was far from great. In 2018-19, Yakupov left the NHL for Russia, and he has never looked back since. Even in his KHL seasons, he maxed out at 33 points in 47 games played. So, realistically, not really too much of a guy that is a top-tier player with SKA, with Avangarn Omsk, or even with the team he is on right now, that in which I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Yeah, that's a crazy name. Either way, Neil Yakupov is a KHL regular at this point. He has not lived up to his first overall status, and you could debate why that was the case. He was a first overall guy for a reason, but on the recent Drop and Gloves podcast, he did have himself the quotes as to what happened in Edmonton. Now, to help us out, we're going over onto Puck Report NHL, and the reason I like this Instagram post they made is because they have all the quotes just kind of labeled out in one post, and it's in a pretty streamlined type of format, so I can screenshot it easily, put it on the screen. Big shout out to Puck Report and Night Show. Also, the link is going to be in the description to the regular audio if you want to go ahead and listen to the show yourself. But this is what Neil Yakupov says about his time with the Edmonton Oilers, that his relationship with coach Dallas Eakins was ruined early in his second season after being healthy scratched at Toronto. It was so bad after that. I was shocked and lost everything, like energy, momentum. I felt nervous and I lost control. His agent said that he should have asked for a trade right away, but they didn't do it. Yakupov says this about Dallas Eakins, he just didn't like me. He told me, like, defense, 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 but he wasn't teaching me that, kinda. If you know a player's doing something wrong, you gotta tell him. I never learned how to play, he basically never taught me. That guy was just weird. I don't know. And if you take a look at Yakupov and his seasons in Edmonton, his first year, the lockout shortened season, 31 points, 48 games, as we had said, the next season after that, 24 points in 63 games, so fewer points in more games, he was a minus 33, which is not great. And things started to go even more poorly from then. But it is intriguing to note how apparently Dallas Eakins was one of the guys that sort of halted Yakupov 
in the words of Yakupov himself. Of course, I'm not going to go out there and say that these comments are 100% gospel, but if we try to build off of the ideas mentioned here, Yakupov is pretty much blaming Dallas Eakin, saying that, yeah, after I got scratched, I lost a lot of momentum, I lost a lot of control, I felt nervous, and I felt shocked about that. Pretty much kind of saying that he felt that there was a sort of loss of security with his job once he realized that he has the potential to get healthy scratched. Also, with Dallas Eakins telling Yakupov over and over that Yakupov's got to play defense, that's not really something that surprises me too much considering how NHL coaches and NHL fans and analysts normally view Russian players. Sure, a lot of these guys could be skilled and they have a lot of puck skills and they could shoot and they can score and they can do things in the offensive zone, but we've seen this pattern present itself multiple times throughout the years with these younger Russian guys that, hey, you need to play defense. You need to play a more defensively responsible game. Stop just holding onto the puck trying to do something. Learn to dump it in once in a while. Play on the boards. Learn to back check. Do all these things. When it comes to Russian players, I mean, the one that comes to my mind right away as a Canucks fan is Nikolai Goldobin. He experienced some of those same critiques over the past few years when he was in Vancouver, and guess what? That guy yeeted off to Russia too. So for Neil Yakupov to explain how he was being treated the same way, that he was being told about defense, but then also say that Dallas Eakins didn't actually teach him how to do things properly. That is kind of interesting, but it is also sort of indicative as to the, I don't want to say the mindset of Yakupov and how he perceives this entire situation, but just where his intentions were in terms of growing his game and wanting to get better. He was a skilled forward that wanted to do skilled forward things, and he wanted the attention, he wanted the spotlight, you saw that with his goal celebrations. He was a very high-profile type of athlete. Not necessarily somebody who was worthy of that number one spotlight, but he played like he wanted it. And sometimes you could see that manifesting in poor results defensively, but for Neil Yakupov, I mean, as the seasons went on, with him losing his confidence and not being able to grow at the NHL level, there definitely were more disappointments than one with this player. There are some other notes, though, from this interview. The article, or not the article, the Instagram post talks about how the draft process in 2012, it was overwhelming and difficult because he didn't speak English. He also disagreed with Brian Burke's negative assessment of his draft interview, saying it probably came from him being scared and homesick. If you remember, Brian Burke went out there and said that Neil Yakupov had the worst interview he has ever seen out of any prospect. So Yakupov is defending himself, saying, yeah, I'm scared, I was homesick, I maybe had some lost in translation things, and that's kind of why Burke had that opinion of me. He also said, It was a challenge to have a new coach every year, which made it hard to build momentum and systems, chemistry and confidence, and there was a huge difference in culture and attitude towards winning with the Avalanche and the Blues compared to Edmonton. It wasn't, will we make the playoffs, but how far can we go? And yeah, that's not incorrect, you know? The Avalanche were a team that were kind of down in the dumps themselves a little bit. They were first overall in 2013. They were fourth overall in 2017. Yakupov was gone by then. But this was a team that had themselves this idea in their minds that they could go out there and they could actually improve. After they grabbed Kale McCarr and he was looking good, this is where things started to turn up. You saw Nathan McKinnon starting to put up beastly numbers and Yakupov was a part of that team saying, yeah, this team wants to go out there and win and they feel like they can. For St. Louis, similar thing. They had themselves a finals appearance in 2019. So there was a lot of momentum with the Blues. And the team that Yakupov was on in St. Louis, you still got some really good names over there. Steen, Petrangelo, Schwartz, Tarasenko, Perron. Was David Backus still here at this time? No, I don't think so. But the Blues were still fairly competitive in the middle to late parts of 2010's hockey. So... For Yakupov to pretty much label out that the Oilers had this standard of not winning compared to the other two teams he had went to, that's not surprising. I mean, the Oilers were first overall, what is that, four years out of six? Something like that. 2010, Taylor Hall. 2011, Nugent Hopkins. 2012, Neil Yakupov. And 2015, Connor McDavid. Something like that. Either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about Neil Yakupov speaking out about the Edmonton Oilers and the way Dallas Eakins coached him in Oil Town? Do you agree with his assessments that things weren't really fair and that he 
kind of had the right to feel a little bit more scared and insecure after he got scratched and after he was told to play defense but didn't end up getting told how to do so. What are your thoughts on the way Eakins coached the team back in this time frame and how does that affect your assessment on Neil Yakupov? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 99 and bye.